Welcome to the video tutorial for the Lubbeth Design Editor, which works along with Webify theme templates. What I'm looking at right now is the official Webify blog, which is using the theme template called W8, which is based off of the new Windows Metro theme style, which I personally really like. Um, but let's say you want to change your default Webify theme to uh, something else. So from uh, the themes panel of your Web Webify installation you'll have the option to design your own theme and from that page you'll have a, a button called launch theme designer. So I click that. This will open up the Lubbeth page and if you don't already have, have a Lubbeth account you'll need to create one it is free to use. You can create one template for free and then you can modify that template and download it and save a copy on your local computer. But if you want to store multiple themes on Lubbeth then they do have a small subscription fee which is very optional. You know it, it just it, it makes it a little bit more convenient to manage multiple themes. But if you're only editing one theme then it won't really be necessary. So anyway now I'm in the Lubbeth visual editor and uh, as you guys can see it looks exactly the same as my Webify blog. The only difference is it's got some placeholders. So where this says Webify official blog and this has my buttons up here, uh, this has a very generic your site name and some generic sort of entries. So these are only placeholder spots to help you design and visualize the way that the theme is going to look when it's finally published. When it's finally published it'll have all of your actual site data replacing the default uh, placeholders. So the first thing actually you're going to want to do if you already if you have a subscription to Lubbeth and if you're just getting started and you only have one theme then you can skip this step but if you have a subscription and, and you have multiple themes to manage like for example I have quite a few themes created in my Lubbeth uh, panel the first thing that you're going to want to do is duplicate the theme that you're looking at because Lubbeth will auto save your work as you go along so if you don't want to um, put if you don't want to corrupt your existing theme and move it all out of place and lose that template then create a, a, a copy first by going to, to uh, file and then duplicate which I actually just did and the second step is go to file and then theme details and it'll automatically give it a name. This one is called POP Copy. Um, Lubbeth, Lubbeth added the uh, copy automatically, so I'm just going to give it an official name. I'm just going to call this Demo because you know that's what it is. So demo theme, so you guys can learn how to use the Lubbeth Visual Editor. Now, whilst using the Lubbeth Visual Editor, you will see as I mouse around different sections become uh, highlighted. These are all editable sections. These are all different CSS div tags essentially. Um, up here you have the logo and you guys can move that logo around anywhere on the page. Um, if, you're, if you have a larger image you can of course expand the logo, logo area and if you want to adjust the position that the graphic appears within the logo box which is this dotted box then you can go to the background option and you can go to image position and you can specify if you want it to appear left to right or center of this little box right but uh, you can put any, any image that you have on your computer into this little box and the way that you do that is you just make sure the box is selected and the selected box will always have these little uh, circles in the corners. As you can see the, the uh, container box is also highlighted but only, only the selected box has the little circles in the corners so you can always know which box is selected by which one has little circles. So the logo here is now selected. I'm going to go to background upload image. I'm going to choose an image to upload. Um, let's see. Let's say, I don't know. Let's, let's use this little guy. He'll be my logo. 
All right. So as you can see, he's actually uh, he's actually bigger than the amount of space I've allowed in the logo area. So you guys can uh, adjust the size of the logo box just by dragging the handles around. Um, he's also not set on a transparent background, so you can see I've just got this white block, white box now in the screen, um, which you may or may not you know want. You may want to put it on a transparent background depending on what sort of design you're creating, or you might just want to change the background color of the entire page. And again, to select the page, just click somewhere in the page area, not on any of the elements, but in the page area. And I don't know if you guys can see, but um, there is a very light uh, selection marquee around the background, which means I have the background selected. And I'm just going to go to background and then background color. And select the uh, slider here lets me select whatever color I want. Um, which actually did not work, and there's a reason for that because I actually have a uh, background image applied. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's actually a sort of a gradient fill to the background. It starts lighter here and gets darker as it goes on. So right now I've actually got a background image right here. So to actually clear that background image, I'm just going to go to background and then clear image. All right, and now you can see that the background color is the background color that I wanted it to be. And it's, uh, the design changes, the colors and everything like that happens real time so you can kind of drag the slider around and choose whatever color you want for your background. Um, I'm just going to choose a sort of neutral color so you guys can, so it's uh, kind of obvious what I'm working on here. And what I'm going to do in this guy's case is I'm just going to constrain the proportions uh, of the logo size to match the logo size of my uh, sidebar box, more or less. And actually, if you guys want to get really specific about dimensions, just select the object that you want to modify, go to Tools, and go to Dimensions, and you can actually input a numeric value, value in pixels to determine how big or small you want a particular object. So if I wanted to get really specific here, um, I could actually check the dimensions on this one by clicking on it, and as you can see it's 241, and then I can go up to this one and I can match that exactly for 241 so that they're both exactly the same size. Right. So now it's a different color background, but at least it matches my box down below, so that's alright. Um, everything can be moved around, as you can see. I can move the site name to the bottom of the page if I wanted it there. Um, the way to change a uh, font is to go to type and uh, as you can probably see um, there are there is a, a selection box for this text area okay so as you're designing keep in mind that for example this is called Web webify official blog and that's how long the text is. In this example, your site name is quite a bit shorter. Now, if I was to drag this title box down to this size, or actually even this size, it would be big enough to hold your site name. But if we were actually loading this in my actual template, it would only come to about here. And the next word would drop onto the second line. So that wouldn't look very good. So be sure that you allot enough space in any word areas like the title or the description, a lot enough space for any potential text that might be typed up there. So if your site name is, you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, be sure that you have a long enough title text box um, selection area so that you have enough space for that entire title. And here's the thing. Um, in some cases you might want it to actually drop down to the second line, like if I don't want my text to run into and over top of the logo, I'm going to obviously stop it right here. And you know any longer text will need to be dropped down to the next line, or you're going to want to change the uh, font size. And to change the font size, there's actually a quick way to do it right here. And you can um, sort of drag it, drag the slider up and down to whatever size of font you want. Um, and there's another way to do it because that's actually the quick selection. It only goes to 32 pixels in size. And if you want to go even bigger, 
you go to the uh, textile properties tab and you can actually set any dimension you want like you can type in a numeric value if you want to to set it really really big but the slider itself goes up to only 72 pixels um, when the slider you know the slider assumes common commonly used uh, like settings but if you want to go above the commonly used settings you can just type in the number value and it will you know make it as big as you want you know there's a thousand pixels that's probably a little too big um, <laughs> so the uh, font selection menu is here so you can just click through the web safe fonts from this panel and keep in mind that only the first that only the first uh, page and the first two here are actually web safe so if you select any of the other ones like these ones down here they those fonts may not load up in all browsers so if you want to make sure that your design is compatible for all users and all browsers choose from the web safe selection here um, you can uh, put in different options to do with the text from the properties menu such as bold italic um, that sort of thing decoration you can put an underline or a strike through or whatever you can set the set the uh, text to automatically capitalize you can set things like spacing between letters and spacing between lines um, you can set a, a drop shadow and if you guys probably can't see the tiny little drop shadow that this one has so I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and uh, A little darker just so it shows up. It's kind of hard to see, but um, there's the drop shadow that we're that I'm designing right now. Add a little bit of blur radius to it to kind of soften it up. And all of these different tabs will affect the font style and you can use this menu not just for the title but for any text on the screen so that's the description that's the buttons that's the uh, title posts and everything so if I want to affect the text of say this box here same method right just go to type <clears throat> adjust the size as you please so uh, let's say again in the same way that I adjusted the background color of the overall page I can adjust the background color or image which is put into any box so you guys saw how I put an image into the logo box well I can put an image into any box that I want to so let's say I wanted to create like a, a background like a nature background right I might go to my web browser and I might look for nature backgrounds I don't type very well, but it's okay because Google knows what I mean. And select the nice nature background, like this one here, for example. Save it to my desktop. And actually, it's this here. And uh, now I have got the uh, header area selected. You can tell that it, the header area is selected again because it's the one that's sur that has the uh, small uh, round circles in the corners. Even though that this this is also highlighted, this whole box is highlighted. The one which is selected is the one which is within the circle circle uh, graphics. So to add a background to this header area only, I'm going to go to background, upload image. I'm going to go to my desktop and add the image that I just downloaded from Google and as you can see it is now up there in my header image at least a part of it is if I increase the size of my header of course more of the background will appear but uh, you might not want to show the whole background you know size in your in just your header alone um, if I wanted this background image to appear 
larger in the overall design, I would actually just change which box it goes into. So instead of selecting the header, I would select this container, which holds both the header and the background. I would do the same thing, background upload image, select the nature background, and now it appears in the whole box. Right? Um, what's happening right now is you can see the background is automatically repeating itself. Oops, that's not good. What's happening? Okay, so the background is automatically repeating itself. If I didn't want it to do that, I would go to background uh, image position and I would uncheck repeat vertically, repeat, repeat horizontally, and now it'll only show one once. You can also send, you can also position the background image, and I'll just show you how, what, that, what, I, what that does. So I'm going to clear the image from here, and this time I'm going to upload the background image. You see what I just did there? I clicked the background area of the whole page, all right, and I'm going to upload image, upload the same image again, and as you can see, it's now the background of the overall page. But it's only showing once because we've unchecked repeat horizontally and vertically, but if I wanted it to repeat throughout the entire page, I would just check those, right? So I think actually what I want to do with this image is I want to actually put a background in back into my header and just kind of have it as a little bit of header decoration. And I'm just going to drag it down a little bit to about here. That's kind of pretty. Um, as you can see as I'm dragging, the sizing is kind of getting thrown off, right? When you start a design, a good idea is to decide what kind of overall width you want to use. Some common widths uh, used are like 950 pixels wide. Um, sometimes I do 1024 pixels wide, but if you do much wider than that, then you'll run into browser compatibility issues. People with lower resolution screens will not see the entire width of the, de of the design and they will get horizontal scroll bars, which is not good. So if you stick to about 950 pixels wide all the way up to about 1024 pixels wide, then you're pretty safe. So I'm just, so anyway, what I was saying is as I was kind of adjusting the uh, header background, the size kind of got thrown off. Now I could very specifically align it like this, you know, and try to get it precisely in place, or I could just go to the tools dimension panel and set it to be exactly the dimension that I want it to be, which is in this case 1024. Okay, so that makes sure everything is perfectly aligned. Now, the uh, let's look at the button menu up here because there are a few options that we can do with this. So, for example, uh, we can adjust, of course, things like the background color of the buttons. And since we're, we've kind of got a green theme going on, maybe I'll stick to green. Kind of a dark green might look nice. But uh, if I want to adjust the size of the buttons, I I select the first button, the normal button, and I can adjust the size of the buttons like that. If I want to be very specific, I can go to Tools, and again, Dimensions, if I want to set a very specific width, say 950, or I can go to the Padding menu, and as you guys can see, there's some padding values, top, right, see what's happening as I take these away, left, and or bottom and left, but you see what happens as I take those away, the uh, padding between the word and the button background kind of goes away. But if I want to set very specific padding, I can just kind of go through here in the numeric value and set a specific padding. You can see as I drag this around, the padding uh, numeric values also change. So it's just one way to be precise if you want to be very precise. So to change the button size, you click the first button and you drag it around. Now to change the spacing between the buttons, click the over button. Um, it's going to try to pop up a, a selection menu actually. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to click in this case, but yeah, yeah hang on. Yeah. Actually I was wrong. Forget the over button. 
uh, it's the pressed button that you want to click to adjust the spacing between buttons. So now instead of adjusting the size, like like what happened when I clicked the first button, when you click the pressed button, you can adjust the spacing in between buttons. All right. So the normal button is how the button looks norm, like when nothing is happening. But if we're looking at the design for Webify right now, you can see when I mouse over, it gets a little bit darker. And that's basically what the over button does. So when you click the over button, what it's, what it's actually showing me here, and I'm, maybe I can just move this out of the way because it's kind of irritating. But uh, no, I guess I can't. Um, the over button can be, you know, the background color can be adjusted in the same way. So now the overstate, uh, I'm just having issue here. I think that what happened in this particular design is the over button got moved um, to a position which is actually pretty hard to move it out of. But you guys probably won't have this issue. It's just something that something that I guess I did. This uh, Lubbeth editor is really really great, but it does have a few tiny little tiny little uh, quirks that you have to learn to work around. So anyway, the uh, adjusting the color of the over button is exactly the same as adjusting the color of the normal button or pressed button or whatever. So it works the same. I'm not going to bother to explain how to do that. And again, if you want to change the type size, type setting, you can do all that as well same way. Um, can of course uh, adjust the position of the button bar. And actually do you remember how I was explaining that the length of the title was important? The length of the button bar is also important because the buttons will continue to run, run along in a uh, from you know from left to right or from right to left in whichever way you specify because you can actually specify if you want them to appear to the right or the left but they will run along until they reach the end of their restraining box so in this case if I move the restraining box like this they'll actually even run uh, let's say uh, uh, vertically instead of horizontally right and maybe that's that's what you want them to do in which case you would just give them a really small uh, restriction area but if you want them to keep running all the way across your screen, make sure this bound boundary box goes all the way across your screen. Or if you want them only to run to, like, say, a, a point when you don't want them to overlap some other element, make sure the bounding box goes only to that element. And in this case, like, I want them to run from left to right, but if I wanted to them to run from right to left, I would go to the Type menu, and I would just click the Right Align Right option. There's also an align center option. So yeah, just depending on how you want the buttons to appear on the page. These are representative, of course, just placeholders for the buttons to come. As you can see, I've got one, two, three, I've got six buttons here. So if this was my actual design, it would come come over quite a bit to around here. So anyway, um, so another neat little trick you can do with the buttons is and I'm just going to actually move them to a, a neutral background so this shows up a little better. But if you select one of the buttons and you go to the uh, border menu, you can actually give the buttons a little border. And now you guys can see I put a white border around this one. You can actually adjust the border color. Once you give something a border, some additional menu options will pop up, such as border color. So I can adjust the border color, yeah, as you guys can see. I'm actually going to leave it white. but if I wanted to change the color, that's where the option is. And I can also give the border a radius, like a, um, I, can, I can make it circular instead of square if I want to, depending on how much of a radius I want on those corners, right? So now, as you can see, I've set the buttons to have a nice sort of roundish border. border. And if you're doing this, you'll probably want to make sure to do, to make sure that all your buttons look similar. I'm actually not going to do that in this demo, but uh, if I was doing an actual design, I would make sure all the buttons have a similar sort of border look to them. That way when, when this one gets moused over, it's not going to turn into this little square, because right now that's what will happen. And I'll show you how that happens when I finally publish this design. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to move that back up to its place now. 
and I think I'll move this site description up here and uh, something like that. Maybe something like that. And then I can run this all the way along. And this little guy, he just does not look good where he is. It's uh, because he's got a white white uh, background instead of a transparent background. If you want to have a, a nice looking image that has a that uh, you can see the background through, make sure that you save as a transparent PNG with a transparent like background in Photoshop. But uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to ignore that. <clears throat> uh, again, if the, in the same way that I adjusted the button's border width, like the uh, circular, circular border, I can do that to any element I want. So now I've got the uh, main text area for the page selected here, and if I go to border, I can set a border, and I can set a corner radius, right? So uh, I can also set a border opacity, that is a transparency, so I can make it more or less transparent. And the same actually applies to every element on the screen. If I want to go to background and set background transparency, I can do that like right up here. So. Now I don't even have a background at all, which I'll just leave as is because it's a little different than the starting design. Uh, I can adjust where this starts on the screen. To do that, you just have to, have to actually mouse around until the uh, sort of boundary box that you want to select is highlighted. And it'll take a little bit of learning to figure out what to click to adjust which section, but you'll get used to it as you keep using this program. This is like a really great program, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. So I'm selecting the boundary box. And again, you can see I have it selected because these little circles are highlighting the corners of it. Um, and if I wanted to, you know, just sort of adjust the padding and that sort of thing, I could do it like that. Or I could adjust, like I say, the, the position where the sort of main page content starts to appear. So this actually is kind of hard to see. I can adjust the the font color by clicking one of the font items and I'm just going to go to file type text color. I'm just going to make that a little bit easier to see. The link color is specific like its own specific thing. <clears throat> and I can adjust that in much the same way. So now my links are going to look like this when they get moused over and that's how they're going to look normally. If I want the links to stand out and be a different color, I can just uh, you know select what I want them to look like normally. So <clears throat> as it stands in the menu bar, the links will look like that. The text, which is unlinked, will look like that. And the uh, most over links will look like, like that. And I can, of course, adjust the uh, text style of any element on the screen in the same way. So, something like that. And uh, what else to show? Let's see. From the um, tools menu, we've looked at, you won't really need to use the add remove panel much, but if you want to use it, you can do things like remove the logo entirely, remove the site title or site description, the uh, post meta and post utility, these are actually specific to WordPress and are not, are not used in Webify, so you do, do not need to, to use those. The sidebar can be removed entirely, and the uh, footer link can be removed entirely, of course. I don't, probably, didn't, probably didn't see, but when I can remove the footer link as well. Um, the border menus we've already covered, and of course border applies to anything, even the logo, if you want to give the logo a border, or a, uh, 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 like a curve, you can do that. That actually looks a little bit better if I have that white background in a sort of rounded border, 
It looks a little bit more like it's supposed to be there. Not not a lot, but a little bit. Um, we've covered border, we've covered type, we've covered background. And yeah, okay, so we've covered enough, I think. So let's say it, you want to now put your theme live into your Webify website. What you will then do is click download. Give it a minute or two. Well, less than a minute really. If you are using Chrome, your download will appear right down here and you can actually just drag and drop right from this area. But if you're not using Chrome, then you will have to navigate to the uh, download folder. And I'm actually just going to do it that way so that you guys can see how to do this in case you're not using Chrome. All right, so here's the uh, demo zip file. As you guys can see, that's what Lubbeth sent to me when I clicked download. So to import this now into Webify, go back to your Webify panel, and you can go to the themes menu, import a theme, and open up the folder which has your theme in it. In this case, it was called demo. You can actually either choose to browse for this file, or you can just drag and drop this file right over top of where it says choose file, and that puts the uh, file into the upload panel. As you can see it says demo.zip right here. Click import theme. It's now uploading. And now it is uploaded, so you're going to go to activate this theme, which is now here. For some reason the screenshot is not showing up, but usually it will have a screenshot that uh, gets assigned to it, as these ones do. I don't know why the screenshot's not showing up, but click the check mark to activate the theme. And now when you go over to look at your Webify website, when you refresh the page, it will not work at all. Neat. Alright, so something obviously went wrong here. What did I do? I think I know what I did. I've got the upload size limitation. Uh, I've got my sorry, my server upload max upload size is set to like two megabytes, and the theme, because of all the images I uploaded, was more than two megabytes. So I'm just going to actually make the theme size a little smaller here. Go back to import theme again. Same process: drag and drop, import. This time when it imports, it should actually upload all the way. And the theme will already be active, but now you can see the, the thumbnail is showing up because the file uploaded this time, and last time it didn't actually upload all the way. This, probably, this will probably not be an issue for you because uh, your server will probably accept larger than 2 megabyte files. But if you do run into this issue, what you can do is you can just open the Lubbeth zip file the demo zip file and you can delete the uh, Lubbeth file within which is going to be like probably a megabyte or two by itself and then you'll have enough uh, like then the file size will be quite a bit smaller so that when you upload it you can see that your theme is now in place and remember when I, I said you should adjust the mouse over state to be matching well that's why because now the mouse over state is like really quite a bit different and it's pretty funny when I mouse over stuff but yeah anyway there's our there's our theme it's applied to the entire website your entire Webify website and uh, that's how you create your own theme oh yeah guys um, for those of you who are design savvy and uh, forgive like the the sort of haphazard uh, haphazard demonstration for theme design. I just thought I should throw something up there really quick to get you guys started as we kind of launch uh, 
more and more systems of the Webify content management platform something to get started with so this uh, video demonstration is a little bit rough I know but at least it'll get you guys started but it, you know, as I was saying for those of you who are design savvy and you want to like sell your themes that your themes you've created for Webify you can actually do so directly on our website uh, just go to Webify and click the themes panel and that then click the sellers button and you can create it create a free account and sell your Webify themes directly within our store. Uh, as you can see, I've got like only two added right now. I'll have another like dozen or dozen and a half added later today that are all already made. I just haven't added them to the store yet. But when you sell your own theme on our store, you will of course get access to our users. You know, all the users that come to our website, they find your theme. If they buy your theme, what we will do is we'll give you 70% of the purchase price of your theme and you can set whatever price you like for it and uh, we'll take a, a commission of 30 percent for the you know the services and you guys can actually earn money selling your Web webify themes directly within our store so that's uh, that could be a great little income source for some of you design savvy yeah anyway guys that is the that concludes the Web webify theme design tutorial rough as it may be i'll have a more polished one ready for you